Right before we jump into this video, if you want to get my free 11 days to better photography mini video course, head on over to fronosphoto.com 11 days to get started right now. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and I want to give you a quick crash course on understanding ISO. Now, because this is quick, I'm not going to go into super details, but let's look at what the fundamentals of ISO actually are and what ISO is affecting with your images. Now, let's take it back to the film days. They used to say if you're going to be shooting in bright light, you want to use a slower speed film. So you could get away with using 100 ISO, 200 ISO if there's a ton of light. As you lose light, that's when your ISO starts to go up. The more it goes up though, the more you're going to introduce what we call noise or grain. Let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to take one picture at a low ISO and one at a higher. So let's take a look at the lower ISO. There's one. And let's switch this up and get to the higher ISO and see the results. Boom. There you go. So what you can see right here is in the lower ISO image, look how colorful, look how smooth the out of focus area is. Look at the shadow areas. Shadows are where you start to see a lot of the noise slash grain. Now when we switch over to the super high ISO image, you see it has a more muted color look because the higher the ISO goes, the more color you're losing. The dynamic range goes down. Also, you're introducing a lot more noise and grain, so you're not getting a cleaner image. So that's understanding ISO as it pertains to noise. The lower the ISO, the cleaner the image. The higher the ISO, the less clean, the more noise and grain you're going to introduce. But let's also look at ISO as it pertains to subjects you're shooting, because ISO is one part of that exposure triangle. As I change the ISO, that's directly affecting how my shutter speed is going to be. So if I'm trying to shoot a moving subject at a slow ISO in a low light situation, my shutter speed's not going to be fast enough and that person may blur. So in this situation, you bump the ISO up higher, which in turn is going to raise your shutter speed and allow you to hopefully freeze motion. So that's a rule of thumb to keep in mind. If you're shooting a subject that's moving, you may need to have a higher ISO, but keep in mind, if it's ultra bright outside, you may still be able to get away with a lower ISO when shooting a moving subject. So there's a lot of different nuances that go into this, but I want you to remember this. Lower ISO, cleaner shot. Higher ISO, the more grain and noise you may introduce. But I want you to remember that today's cameras have the ability to go to much higher ISOs than just a couple years ago. So as a rule of thumb, 6400 or 12,800, depending on the camera you're using, should be your max. And whatever the minimum is, that's the minimum that you can use. Minimum's fine, higher you just want to be careful with. Keep in mind, if you get your exposure wrong and you try to tweak every Everything later, you may introduce more noise and grain, especially when you're using a higher ISO. Now, this is just a quick crash course to understand the basics and fundamentals of ISO. If you want to take a deeper look at this and the rest of the exposure triangle, I created the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto that's going to quickly help you get out of auto and understand all of the nuances that I just tried to explain here with ISO, as well as the rest of the exposure triangle and how to get photos in different and unique situations. So check out fronosphoto.com guide to get a free preview of the guide right now to see if it's for you. So that's where I'm going to leave it. I hope it helped you out. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya. Subscribe now. Watch this, watch this video.